Hello, hello there. Hi, who's here? Greetings and welcome. It is Joe Zuleika coming live for day four, day four for Create More Confidence. Who's here? Come online, say hello, throw me some emojis, say hi. Let us know you're here. So glad to get started. We'll get started in just about a minute here. We're a little bit early. Today is day four and we're talking about people pleasing and perfectionism. Whoa, those are two huge issues in so many of our lives. Hi, Deanna, who else is here? Say hi, you're here early. Hi, Jen, welcome. You know what today's all about? People pleasing and perfectionism. Try saying that without any peas. It's a big day. Hi, Amy George, welcome back. This is a very rich training, really excited to share it with you. These tendencies are not helpful in our lives, but we seem to fall into them as if they're our default mode or way of being. Do you feel that that's true? Do you tend to be a people pleaser? Do you operate from a place of perfectionism? We're just getting warmed up here. Welcome, I'm loving having you here. You know what I wanna to do to start off? I wanna get some really good energy going and what I'd love to do is get some testimonials going. I'd love to get some testimonials going here in the group. Um, would you mind starting to post about this community? Would you post something about what are you finding that is so supportive about this community or how valuable are you finding the content that's been presented to you here so far? Um, what else could you share? Something positive. What are you delighted about this workshop that you didn't expect? Like, I did not expect X, Y, or Z. I'd love to hear that. Or what's one thing that you're already putting into practice that you've learned from this time that we've spent together? Would you share? Would you make some comments about what's working for you? Or what you're enjoying about the community or how valuable you're finding this experience to be? Um, what's one big thing you've learned so far? Would you share? Go ahead and print it in there. And I'm just gonna kind of stretch it out, get ready for our big topic today. People pleasing and perfectionism, can't wait. But in the meantime, let's log on, say hello, throw us some hearts and emojis, let's wake up Facebook. Let's let everybody who's in this group know it's starting. The more you post, the more they get tickled that it's time to come in here. That's how Facebook works. The algorithm tells it, you know, hey, there's something happening over here. Yay, Dana, the content is motivating me to show up for myself. Hi, Virginia from the Philippines, good morning. What else is this content um, triggering you to do, delighting you to do? What are you, what are you getting out of this that you didn't expect? Where's the value for you? This is awesome because this is our fourth of five days and it is a very rich lesson that we're going to bring to you. It was so interesting to me that um, when I posted in the group a poll, which do you suffer more, people pleasing or perfectionism? And we took that poll. The results were really interesting. I'll tell you in a minute. In the meantime, keep bringing it on. Keep saying hello. Tell me what you're getting out of this group. How valuable are you finding this? Are you enjoying this community? What are you already putting into practice? Where's the value for you? If you're not driving, go ahead and text me something. Write something in the chain that's supportive and reaffirming and encourages us all to keep going. Because today we're talking about people pleasing and perfectionism. We want to keep that high energy. We want to keep going. You've spent a lot of energy here learning these new tactical tips to help you in your life. And I've got another rich segment for you today. All right, so shall we dive in? You are going to succeed today by learning actionable tips to counteract, to counteract not just that negative voice that we talked about on day two, or those self-limiting behaviors, beliefs that you had on day three, the imposter syndrome, but today, the behaviors that really emanate your life that hold you back from your greatness. And I'm gonna explain what they are. I'm gonna explain the cost to you for keeping these in place, because they do come at a cost, and then tactical tips for how you can handle them. So great, I love seeing some of the comments about what this group means to you. Keach says, it's reinforcing that I am not alone. I know that logically, but to set it in action is huge. 
yeah, to see it in action is huge. Thanks, Keech. It's so great. It's so great to feel that community. Like the, there are really so many of us suffer from some of these um, bad beliefs and misguided behaviors and lack of self-esteem and confidence, even as we're appearing to be so capable and, and competent in the world. And it's like a secret that we keep that is a cost for us to hold. It's like a hot coal to be holding that in your hand and trying to cope and, and accomplish all that you do anyway, even as you're working sort of upstream with some of these really hard um, beliefs. So thank you for sharing that. Sharon Fisher says, finding great changes in me to help others. Awesome. Way to go, Sharon. That's super awesome. Who else has something that they want to share? Go ahead and keep posting it in the comments. Let's encourage each other. Encourage me. I'm your teacher, kind of alone over here, feeling, wanting to feel your energy. Hi, Valeria. Nice to see you. Coming in from New Mexico. All right, so today's content is all about two reactive tendencies that reflect inner beliefs and assumptions that limit our effectiveness, that limit our authentic expression, and limit our empowering leadership. And it might be surprising because in small measure, both of these are actual traits of high performers. Right? So people pleasing, being compliant, being easygoing, being people oriented, being receptive to other people, caring what other people think, looking for harmony, trying to get to a um, collaborative compromise. That can be a very powerful leadership trait. There's nothing wrong with having some of this in your DNA. But taken too far, it's going to drain you. And I think that you already recognize that. Similarly, perfectionism. In small doses or even somewhat healthy doses, it's kind of what helps you get to where you are today. If you really are a striver, an achiever, somebody who has a strong work ethic, who really cares about your performance, that wants to actually do well and make the mark, it's how you got great grades, it's how you got into a great college, it's how you probably have progressed in your career. Some of that perfectionism in your tendencies fuels you and keeps you, you know, leaning forward. But to a detriment, it will start to drain you. And that's what we're discussing today is how these are actually sort of not helpful at the levels that you might be carrying them. They're actually hobbling you. They're not spurring you on to greater success. They're like, like Gulliver, they're pulling you down and keeping you limited. So can you relate to that? Give me a hell yes if you can relate to that. Maybe you don't know yet, and maybe you need me to describe a little bit more what these traits are. So I'm just going to keep going and diving in there. Keep saying hi. Keep throwing me your emojis. Keep telling me what this group is meaning to you, what you're learning, and listen at the same time. All right, you ready for the description? People-pleasing. People-pleasing is all about complying. It's getting your self-worth and your security by complying with the expectations of others rather than acting on what you intend and what you want. It's kind of a mouthful, so I'm gonna give you that definition again. Yes, hi Heidi, hi Susie Q, hi Keech, hi Deanna. Yes, Deanna, she's a recovering perfectionist. Great, when we get there, maybe you can give us some tips and share with the group. Hi Larissa, hi Becky. Oh yeah, I've done Enneagram. Becky Gaines asked me if I've done that. That kind of is another uh, beautiful tool that helps show you where you are on the spectrum of being receptive to people or being empathetic and how that affects your energy. Okay, so again, people pleasing. The definition is getting your self-worth and security by complying with the expectations of others rather than acting on what you intend and what you want. So the core issue about this underneath it all is that you're giving away your security based on what other people say or feel or want or intend. So you are getting your security outside yourself, not from within yourself. Does that resonate? I'll give you some more experience here. It's seeking support and approval in order to feel secure and worthwhile. 
That's what people pleasing is. It's making sure that um, that you're seen in a positive light that makes you feel sorted and comfortable and secure. It's a strong need for approval. It's a strong need to base your self worth on the ability to gain others' favor and get confirmation from them that you are worthwhile. You may see yourself at the mercy of external circumstances beyond your control, so you sort of submit your power to others. This is sort of the passive side of people pleasing, where you just sort of surrender and feel like maybe it's too hard and you're, you can't control things, so you just submit to the way things are. It's all about wanting to win safety and gain approval. You'll know that you suffer this if you have an interaction that feels confronting or potentially negative or where there's drama or friction and you feel bad. You feel terrible because you think you may have made somebody feel bad or you made it worse or you were kind of like front and center in the middle of something dramatic. A people pleaser will die a million deaths when they feel that experience. You feel me? So... You can also, if you're a people pleaser, you can be prone to some other things like um, overly trying to conform, to try to fit in, to constantly be looking, be looking at the expectations of others, those that are in authority, to understand what right and wrong is or how, what, what the going way is, rather than self-determining for yourself what is right. I call it going along to get along. It's like reading the energy and then matching that energy. You are compressing the full extent of your greatness, of your creative power, into culturally acceptable boxes. That makes you feel safe. You don't want to be looking like you're anything other than what everyone else wants it to be. Okay? All right. So you're feeling it. That's the sort of the belonging piece of it. I don't mean belonging in the way that Brene Brown talks about it. I mean like surrendering your greatness in effort to fit in. And then the other piece that can be with people pleasers is that passivity that I mentioned, where you give your power away to others and to circumstances outside of your control. It's like the universal shrug. It's like, what are you going to do? You know, you just, you can't win, it's the way it is. You feel like your efforts don't make a difference and that you lack the power to create your own future. You sort of feel intimidated by the powers that be. And so therefore you just sort of opt out, you fade out, you lean out, and you become quiet, you kind of pack it in. So people pleasing to a fault and becoming passive and compliant and fitting into a fault really steals your thunder, your ability to be big and large and impactful and unique and um, exactly the individual that you are. It ain't good. And you will torment yourself if you continue to grade yourself based on what you think other people think. Yes, yes, yes. You feel it. You know it. This is what it sounds like. People pleasing sounds like this. Here are some quotes that might run through a people pleaser's head. I'm okay if everyone likes me. As long as I'm not rocking the boat, I'm good. I'm worthy if others approve of me. You know that you might not say it that way, but you might feel really good when your boss gives you a thumbs up or pats you on the head or gives you sort of like a gold star energetically. And opposite, you'll feel terrible if you get the slightest bit of criticism or you feel called out or like you didn't do it well enough. You feel crushed, right? There's these highs and these lows that you ride of whether or not you're accepted and validated by the authority in your figure in your life, the authority figure in your life you follow. Other things that a people pleaser would say, I need to live up to others' expectations to know that I'm a success. The world can be dangerous. Being cautious helps keep me safe. That's kind of a small sliver, caution. It's not generally the hugest part of a people pleaser, but sometimes it makes you quite cautious and not wanting to rock the boat or put a ripple in the, in the pond. And above all, loyalty, harmony, going along to get along are what protect me from disapproval and keep me safe. You guys all feel that? If, you're, if you feel prone to people pleasing, these would resonate for you as something that you feel is true or a dynamic that you're keeping alive in your life. 
Yeah, Larissa's like, especially the emotions going up and down, right? Because there's that power of whether or not the external world, the authority figures or the powers that be outside of you are grading you positively and giving you positive input, input and affirmation and validation or negative and they're giving you criticism and you'll really be affected by that. Okay, so the cost of being a people pleaser at the high end is that you will never truly feel worthy. You can keep scurrying and keep working so hard for that approval and to gain the validation from your boss or your coworkers or for people in your life that you really want to impress, but that is a constant strain and drain because it's not coming from within. You're looking for it outside yourself and it goes up and down and you're never in control of truly feeling like it's something you own. It's something that other people own that you're trying to earn. Are you following? So you don't have enough power over your own sense of worthiness. That's the hazard of being a people pleaser. Sharon says, when I'm called out, my people pleasing bad vibes make me cry and look weak. So you, when you're called out, you're saying that your tendency for people pleasing has you sort of crumble emotionally. Is that right, Sharon? And then you feel like that makes you look weak. It is weakness. It's weakness because you, you don't need to get your validation and all of your approval and all of your strength externally. You need your skeleton inside of you. You don't need your skeleton outside of you. You need the thing that keeps you strong and solid and upright and clear. You know, I'm kind of just following into this metaphor. It's inside. It's deep inside, and that needs to be sorted. It can't be something that you constantly crutch outside of yourself. So let's hear a little bit more. Sharon says, yeah, that's, that's exactly what it is. Do you have any more questions about people-pleasing and how it plays out, or how does it sound to you? Or is there anything that you're like, yeah, but not quite? Feel free to comment. I'm going to take a little sip of water. So glad you guys are here. Because next, we're going to roll into perfectionism. And I mentioned this, but I didn't tell you the, the, the punchline. In the group, I did a poll. Which one is bigger for you? Which one's more powerful over you? People pleasing or perfectionism? Or both? Guess what the answer was? Pretty much equal. Half of you cop to people pleasing. The other half of us cop to perfectionism. And about all of us say we have both. So it feels like such a perfect topic for this group. Maybe you're experiencing both of them. So let's go into perfectionism. It's a bird of a different color. It's still a bird. It's still something that we need to deal with. It's a reactive tendency. And, and I'll explain how they're similar. But, but this is slightly different in that instead of giving up all of your power to an external source to get validation, you're trying to cope with not feeling powerful by pulling it in and being controlling. So perfectionism is establishing your personal worth through task accomplishment and personal achievement. It's all about doing, not pleasing, but accomplishing and doing. So sort of raise your hand if this is you. Yeah, Virginita said she's both. And Amy George says, I want people to be happy, but I'm not really a people pleaser. Maybe this doesn't resonate for you then, Amy. Maybe that's not really your thing. So maybe you're free of this particular reactive tendency at its, at its most draining. All right, so perfectionism, a little bit further, like spreading out this, let's kind of expand on the definition. Attaining flawless results and needing to perform at extremely high standards in order to feel secure and worthwhile so that your worth and security are equated with being perfect. Your worth and security are equated with performing heroically over time, not just once, but like all the time, and succeeding beyond all expectations. Just saying that, doesn't that sound exhausting to have to hold that up all the time? So Keech is like, oh my God, that is so me. Are you talking about being the perfectionist or the people pleaser? 
there's a little delay on the um, the comments, so you never really know what which one we're talking about. So if you suffer from perfectionism, it has served you in your life in some ways to like hustle to prove and make things happen and get good grades and forward your career and you get a shit ton done. You're an amazing list slayer, right? You're so accomplished, but you never feel like it. You never, ever, ever, ever get done. That is the hazard the cost of being a perfectionist. You are never done, you are never satisfied, and you are always criticizing even your best effort. Other parts of perfectionism can be being driven, always in overdrive, always multitasking, always accomplishing a great deal via hard work, and really believing that the hard work has value. Like, it's almost like it, you could get the same amount done, but if it was easy, you don't value it as much as if it was really a struggle. You get addicted to the struggle, which is really sort of twisted. No judgment, because I feel you. I, I do this too. It's something I feel like I'm recovering from this as well. And you'll, this drive will have you constantly wanting to outperform your own self and your work ethic will become unbalanced. It's the kind of thing like where you can end up working all morning and you realize you haven't had anything but coffee and you feel terrible, or you've forgotten to drink, or you don't even use the restroom, you're so busy, right? You feel like you have no time. And you feel full of these sayings of like have to, like these hyper hyperbolic overstatements of like, it's impossible, or it's overwhelming, or it's out of control, or my hair's on fire, or all or nothing. That, that type of thing is something that really infects a perfectionist speech, right? Addicted to struggle, Heidi's like, oh my God, right? Very, very easy to become the striver and the achiever. And that is like your heroine, the, the woman who goes and slays dragons with the heaviest of swords, burdened because it's so hard and you're doing it all the time. So you could also have a, a lot of this self-drive and you could also end up being quite self-critical as a byproduct of being, um, being a perfectionist. What does the perfectionist's inner dialogue sound like? What would they might be saying? Results are everything. Appearances matter. It is so important to me that I am competent and confident and that, it, that I look like I am. I can't make a mistake. I can't make a mistake. I can't make a mistake. Anything less than perfect is not okay. I am absolutely gutted to be exposed for my weaknesses, especially if it's a mistake. Being, here's some things that are kind of maybe on the fringe. Being less than others is unacceptable and threatens my security. That's if you're really competitive. I'm valuable when others look up to me with admiration. It's kind of an overachiever, like it needs to be first. I always need to be first and need to be the best. I, I don't, I, that's my, my, my um, reputation is that I am the best of the best. Um, failure of any proportion is unacceptable and threatens my sense of self-worth. Does anybody feel this? So the cost of perfectionism is never being done and never being good enough. So let me know where, where, that, where that all lies with you. Tina's like, yeah, I'm a perfectionist, but I'm always making mistakes. Well, then maybe we can soften how you feel about them. Heidi's like, but I love a challenge. See, that's, that's it. This is where we need to kind of like peel apart the things. There's not, it's not wrong to have these things inside of us. It's only when we're unbalanced. It's great that we're driven and we like to get things accomplished and we make things happen. There's this beautiful saying that work that is out of um, a place of, of um, love is passion, but work that is out of a place of obligation is... Um, you know, just a drain. It's horrible. It's, it's a chore. But you can have, you know, a, a passion project that you love that you'll spend 10 hours on in a day because you just love making it happen. That doesn't mean that you shouldn't be driven. It means that you're aligned with your values. So thumbs up. So there's nothing wrong with being driven. It just means if you're doing so to the point of only it making a difference for appearances sake, or because you're so critical of yourself, then you're out of alignment. Okay, so 
if you're both, if you're both, you know, a perfectionist and a people pleaser, you may be trying to be perfectly acceptable. You may be pleasing others or using a high performance strategy as a way to win approval. So you're not passive going along to get along. You're struggling, striving, proving so that you'll get a pat on the head, a gold star, a, goal, a, a, a high grade, a raise, a promotion, you know, um, recognition, validation. That's if you're both, right? You can use them. They can feed into each other. But the issue for both of these tendencies, so heads up girls, this is where the lesson comes, the, the issue for both of these tendencies is the same, whether you're, you're all one or all the other or both at the same time, the issue for these is that when you're a perfectionist or a people pleaser, you are authored by others. What others think is more important than what you think. You're giving control of your mood, of your worth, of your sense of fulfillment, of your happiness, of whether or not you had a good day. You're giving all of that control away outside of yourself. They just demonstrate them in different ways. Your full creative self-expression and your leadership are limited by a need to excel and please. If you're trying to excel and please, but not with a higher horizon in view when it's just for to fix the feeling around you of being safe and secure and liked and praised and validated it's limited the challenge is that you're not you're not expansive you're trying to just hold it together so your job is to bring the locus of control from outside of you back inside of you. It's a little bit challenging for a, pre a perfectionist to see this because you're already trying to hold on to control. But what I'm talking about is knowing that you are good enough, valued, worthy enough, smart enough, got it together, doing enough, that you feel this calm sense of inner sense of self-worth. That locus of control is back inside you. Your skeleton is inside your skin so that you have the internal power to decide and author for yourself, not be authored by others, what others peop other people think or say or believe or praise or um, value or validate, but what you do for yourself. That's where the power comes from, to, that, to move that diffuse external sense of achievement and validation to an internal sense of an inner knowing and and inner, I'm okay, no matter what. All right. How are you feeling? Does this feel overwhelming? Are you excited? You want to learn some tactics next? I'm going to give you some tactics. Okay, number one. Recognize when it's fully firing. When that piece of your brain is like pew, 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 pew. When you're fully in perfectionism, when you're under its spell, just notice it. That's job one. Notice it. Notice when you're under the spell of either people pleasing or perfectionism. Notice when you're trying to make people like you, even in a conversation, when you're trying to agree with them rather than say what you really mean. It's happening all the time. Notice when you have this this feeling of like, oh, that that I don't want to wear that. It doesn't look per it doesn't look perfectly perfect on me. It exposes a flaw. Like, up, oh, it's firing. These things will come up in all of these small ways. Valeria means it means I have to let it go, and that's scary. Well, I'm gonna make it not so scary for you. When I say that you need to bring that control back into yourself, at first it feels very foreign. And you're not sure how, but over time with small baby steps, and this lesson is all about baby steps, you will feel some momentum build and some stronger self-authoring where it's coming from you, not from others. So stick with me here. So tactic number one is just notice when it's fully firing, when that part of your brain is really like on fire. And then I like to say, name it. Name it to tame it. Remember two days ago where we named our saboteurs? We called them the gremlin that was in your mind. I made you imagine what it looked like. Name your um, sabotaging thoughts here. Name it to tame it. Like, oh, that's my people pleaser. She can have a name. 
Mine has a name. I don't want to tell you what it is. It's Jenny. Anyway, she's a real person. She's a real person that I've, I've personified, and all she wants is to make everybody feel okay. She wants everything around her to be harmonious. She hates rocking the boat, and she is completely bland. She looks like no one. She has no unique qualities. She's plain because she's a people pleaser. She doesn't want to, like, stand out. So name it to tame it. You can actually give this, this um, archetype in your mind a name, but you can also just name that it's happening. Like, oh, that's my people pleasing. Oh, there's my perfectionism. Either way, you can, you can, you can um, oh, Sharon Fisher says she has a bracelet that says, I am enough. Do you wear it every day, Sharon? That's beautiful. And then third, we're going to go back to life is a lab. Remember when I taught you this lesson? Why don't we relax the, the pressure we put on ourselves for every task to be perfectly accomplished or, or the important ones needing to be perfectly accomplished and try a new way of being? Valeria, this is for you. Just testing new waters. We're not jumping in the deep end. We're not jumping off the high dive. We're not freaking ourselves out by double daring ourselves to do something totally scary and new. We're just going to kind of ease into it. We're going to ease into the shallow end of the pool where all the babies are, where it's nice and warm and it's not deep and you can feel the bottom. We're just testing it. We're just wading in and seeing it's okay. It's not too cold. It's kind of nice. I'm in the pool. This is how you sort of train your mind out of the panic because these strategies are holding you in place. And when you move outside of them, your brain's going to panic and be like, whoa, 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 whoa. This is how we, this is how we do it. We make sure everybody around us is happy. That's how we function. But for you to actually have some positive transformation, you're going to need to kind of push on that just a little bit and see when you do it, the world does not come crashing down you'll see you're actually okay. I wanna say, girls, I am sure you are so much tougher than you even give yourself credit for. The stuff that we put up with, the way that we get up and push through our lives to make things happen, I mean, we're not doing so much of it these days, but just to get up, get ready, get in a car and commute, it's an effort. And then to show up and do everything that we do and multitask and keep a household running and take care of people and pets and family members in our lives, it's a lot. You can handle testing your people pleaser a little bit because you handle so much else. You handle so much in your life already. Trust that you are strong enough to do this. Okay, so tactics for the people pleaser. This is going to be just a few suggestions. They may work for you. It's just me talking into a camera, so I don't know you personally, but Usually when I'm coaching clients who have people pleasing, there are a couple of terms that work for them that serve as sort of like a rung that they can pull themselves up and out from this lower place. And here are the two concepts that you might play with as a people pleaser. Are you ready? One is courageous authenticity. Instead of being authored by others and caring what everybody else thinks and going along to, fit, to get along and fitting in, courageous authenticity is asking, what is true for me? And this doesn't mean you need to shake everything up and all of a sudden be a soldier for truth and crusade by yourself, naked and unafraid, way out in front, and take all the risks. It means you just ask yourself that question. You can make it very private. You can ask yourself every day, what was, what's really true for me? What would be courageously authentic for me? If I was to speak up or if I was to hold my own or if I was to not laugh weak, weakly at some silly joke to go along, what would be courageously authentic for me? And another question you can ask yourself, another concept that often works for clients that I work with that have this tendency is purposeful vision. What is important to me? What is the far horizon of my values? What would be purposefully visionary for me in this moment at my work with this boss, with this task, so that I get out of scurrying and people pleasing and being trying to fit in? What, how could I rise up and feel like I am authored by something bigger, by something internal? 
Is any of those resonant for you? I'm teaching in a very one-way modality here. We're going very deep, but I'm only going sort of like one way. There's not a call and answer here, so I'm not sure how you're resonant with it. But maybe you can just write those down in your journal and think about them. And when we work together, we'll actually figure it out when we have a conversation. So some affirmations for the people pleaser could be, I am always safe with myself, no matter what. I'll never lose me. How's that feel? You don't have to give everything up. You, you're going to trust yourself a little more. I always feel safe with me. I'm always safe with me, no matter what. I'll never lose me. I've always got me. Does that feel good? Here's another one. I always get to choose. All of us can use this. I am always at choice. The, pe the perfectionist can use this too. If you feel like, oh, I have to, or there's, you know, there's no way, or, you know, there's just, it just has to be this way. You are always at choice. It's a really challenging mantra at the beginning of somebody's journey because you'll fight it and think, well, that's not true. I could get fired. I, don't, I can't get to pick. I don't just get to sit on the beach and do nothing. But I know Amy's like, ooh, that's scary. Well, then leave it alone. If there's too much resistance, it's not time. But I hope you liked the I always feel safe with me. I always have me. I always have me. I'll never lose me. I really like that one. So then the question for you becomes, how could you loosen the sounds like beliefs for you, the ones above, and make them softer? Do you remember what they were? The people pleaser sounds like are, um, I'm okay if people like me. I'm worthy if others approve of me. I need to live up to others' expectations to be a success. I can stay safe by supporting others. Loyalty, harmony, and going along to get along protect me from disapproval. How can you form a, an affirmation that loosens that a little bit? So think about it. Okay. Now we're going to go into the tips for the perfectionist. Are you ready? Amy George says that was the, sc the scary part. It's so funny. There's such a delay. I'm not exactly sure what you're referring to. But whatever it is that you want to drop, you get to drop. You get to choose. You get to even choose that. You could be like, this training is not for me. Good on you. You could do that. You could log off. <laughs> I love that. You get to choose your teacher. You could choose everything. You get to choose to spend this time on yourself. You can choose everything. I love the feeling that we get to pick. All right, so for perfectionists, here's, a, here's some tactical tips for how you can overcome perfectionism. Remember where I told you yesterday about the imposter syndrome? One way that you could really loosen that is by mentoring others so that you can really see how much you already know, so that you can feel like this lift of, wow, I actually know more than I thought I did because I'm articulating it to someone else. And it also is very helpful. It's a very feel-good, um, self-perpetuating loop. So in perfectionism, collaborating and mentoring and working with people and through people is so helpful and not always relying on yourself. I can teach you how to delegate. I can teach a perfectionist how to delegate. You could ask yourself, in what areas could I possibly take my foot off the gas just a little bit and not lose the race? And even if I did lose, it wouldn't be that important. Are there some areas where you can kind of loosen this need to be the best, to be first, to do it perfectly, to be out front? Can you stop hustling so hard? You can also, and that it won't really make a difference. You know, sometimes I'll actually give that to a client as a challenge. Like, I want you to try not doing something. And they're like, oh, I don't know if I can not do. And then they realize, I didn't do it, and nothing bad happened. And that's really freeing. It's just a little step, just a little baby step. We're not going to do anything huge and gigantic. We're just going to test the waters, right, and make sure that we're still okay, and you will be okay. And then there are affirmations for you. There are affirmations where it's okay to ask for help. It's okay not to be perfectly perfect. It's okay that I don't know all things. It's okay that I'm trying something new that I don't know yet. It's okay for me to trust others to do something. So I ask you perfectionists, how could you loosen those 
it sounds like things from above, like results are everything, appearances matter, I can't make a mistake, anything less than perfect is not okay, I can't delegate, I'm only valuable when other people see me um, with admiration, being lesser than others is unacceptable and threatens my security, and failure of any proportion could lead to my demise. What might be a softer statement that you could make to any of those kind of internal narratives that happen for the, the perfectionist? All right, I'm going to take a drink. You might try something really gentle, like looking back in your own history where something may be pressed on your people pleasing or pressed on your perfectionism and you see that you are still okay. Even if there was a bad outcome temporarily, you're still here. Even if you feel like it took a piece of you, it, it ripped a strip off of you, you are still here and you're capable of choosing now and growing from that place. The past does not define you. You can always get better and you always are getting better. So let's type a little bit in the comments. What about, where's the aha moments for you today? What are you liking about this? I love, Heidi Sheldon says, I love life as a lab. That would be my bracelet. Beautiful, Heidi. Like, try it. Giving yourself permission to try. Deanna says, it's okay to learn and not expect to be perfect the first time. Great, awesome. Keach says, it's not failure, it's a learning experience. Awesome, Keach. Awesome. Anybody else have something they want to share? All right, you gals are doing so great. We are coming into the final part of our day four training. And isn't this community amazing? Do you guys love the support that you're feeling? This is so great to... Um, to feel community even when you haven't seen each other, you haven't met each other, you're not even speaking, you're just typing. And we all share so much of the same challenges and um, experiences. And you can benefit from being in this community by sharing and participating. Dawn says, I love the term to be your own author. Yeah, write your own story. I love that. And Jen says, reaffirming that value doesn't come from others. I love not letting others be your author. Beautiful, beautiful. And Heidi says, yes, love this community. You guys are awesome. It's, it's like this every time I grow a group together because we're all kind of resonant with the same messages. That's why you're here is you enjoy this type of training. You enjoy this point of view. It, it feeds you. It waters you, right? It helps grow you. Um, I love it. Hi, Heidi. So... Imagine what it would be like if we were actually on a Zoom call, right? And that's one thing one of the members mentioned yesterday. She was like, I want to keep this going after it's over because tomorrow's our last day of training. And I would love to take a moment to share with you how you can keep this type of community going. And I just need a little bit of your permission to take about 10 minutes to explain what it is that this is leading to. That this training is only so effective sort of like one on one you know, like one on many, this one way direction that isn't interactive. It's me sort of training into a void and coaching into a void, but having already gathered together people who were pretty much in the same zone of wanting this type of, of training. So I would love to explain to you what, something about what it is that I've created and how you can benefit from this by being in a program with each other where you can get these thoughts and teachings and embed them directly into your life and have the uplifting community and support like you're receiving here and get rid of the constant tension and stress and lack of confidence that you're, is dogging you because I've developed a leadership program that addresses all of these things and more. And so I want to share a little bit about that with you. And so while you're thinking about it, I want to actually quote a member who's here in the group who wrote to me this last night. You can say it's you if you want to say it's you. She wrote, Joe, this has been a great week and this group is fantastic. Even though I logically, even though logically I realize I'm not the only one who struggles with this, it's really nice to have such an overwhelming, irrefutable piece of evidence that I am not alone which is so hugely critical, especially in our current circumstances, when that isolated feeling is so much easier to fall into, right? 
love it. That made me feel so good that we're, we're, we can create something out of nothing. This didn't exist a week ago and here we are. I get to teach and train. You get to benefit from new thoughts and ideas and support from this community. So what I'm doing is I teach a course. It's called The Completely Confident Leader. And you're like, whoa, I don't know if I'm up for that. But you are because I teach you all the pieces that you need. And you're constantly on the path of becoming more confident. Any time that you need to go back to the material to understand how to become more confident, it's a lifetime guarantee that you have access to this type of training. It's a four month course where I teach and coach you through all of the lessons of personal mastery and leadership ability, two halves of the leadership coin. We start with you in getting more empowered and aware and self mastery about your defensiveness, your fulfillment, your desires, your zone of genius, what you're meant to be and do in this world, figuring out your ideal career, your strengths as others see you, all of these exercises about ourselves so that we have ourselves sorted and put together. And then the second half is all about managing others and being like an amazing leader of other people of a team. How do you resolve conflict? How do you give direct feedback? How do you delegate? How do you motivate a team? How do you speak up in meetings? How do you publicly speak? How do you lead with a sense of authority and inspiration? I teach all of this stuff and I've been teaching it for over 30 years. I've developed this content um, in 30 years of leadership and mentoring and coaching. And I've invested over $50,000 of my own cash in leadership courses and trainings and certifications to distill what I think are the most important lessons for women who want to be stronger leaders and not give up their sensitivity, who are feelers, but also want to make a difference in the world and be seen. So that course that I'm talking about is a weekly modular course where you are self-paced, you go into a member's area, you get a lesson and you get to chew on it and you get to do a worksheet. And that is something that you have lifetime access to. I say it's a $6,000 value because I feel like it would be ridiculous to say what I honestly think it is, which is probably more like $50,000. You guys are just spit when you said that. But one of those modules, I get paid $5,000 per time that I teach it to a corporate client. When I teach conflict resolution, that's the fee. It has that kind of impact and that kind of value. But I like to say, if we're talking about what this course is worth, that's about a $6,000 course value. Plus, I then add on seven mindset and six leadership lessons like how to say no, how to establish boundaries, why we overcommit. Somebody in the thread said that that was them, that they needed that. So with this leadership training and then these seven mindset and leadership lessons uh, added, it's that's a thousand dollars value of video content plus the six thousand dollars value of the course content. So total $7,000 worth of value for this four month course. But the real nut of it is what comes next, small group, group coaching. I only take four or five women per small group so that we get to know each other and we gather once a week on a Zoom call where we land the lesson. This is where you integrate the lesson into your life and get coaching on how it's working for you or not working for you right? You can get feedback and you have accountability to learn these lessons and you get to be in a like-minded group of supportive women. These powerful coaching calls have a value of at least $3,600. They happen every week. So with the coaching calls of 3600 the video lessons of 1000 and the course content of $6,000, we are now up over $10,000 worth of value for this course. But that's not all. On top of that, I want to talk with you one on one to coach you in a high impact scenario so that I know you personally. And so I can get super clear on your individual goals and your hurdles. By adding these one on one sessions, you get personalized attention so that you get the outcome that you want out of the course. Those coaching sessions have a value of $1,500. And so with the course at 6,000, the videos at an extra 1,000, the group calls at 3,600 and now the individual coaching at $1,500, we are over $12,000 worth of value. But I don't charge that. I've created it. And once I've created it, I can package it and bring it to you over and over again. I've done groups for over a year. And, um, and I don't charge anywhere near that amount. It doesn't cost you $12,000. It's less than a quarter of that amount. But it is tuition. It's an investment in yourself. 
And what I'm doing for participants of the Create More Confidence workshop is I want to add one more thing for you. On sign up, I want to give you a deep dive coaching session one on one to kick off, which is a $500 value so that we immediately establish where you're going in this course. Sound good? The deal is I only do this once every so now and again when I want to take on new clients and build a new cohort because I'm only going to take calls for signups for applications this weekend. The video content is going to be down after Sunday and I'm going to finish our um, sign up calls by Sunday and we're going to go live in August with our new cohorts of women that want to be completely confident leaders. So you've got to sign up. You have to apply. I have calls available Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And once that's over, I'm going to call it done and we're going to get started. To apply, you go to www.joeleader.com. Apply. Easy. Joeleader.com slash apply. I'll put it in the comments. I am going to give you guys a discount off of the regularly scheduled price because you already have done a lot of pre-work to make you a great client. And it's my way of encouraging you to invest in you is to give you a discount, but you've got to do it before the end of this weekend because then the price goes up. Okay, so the summary is you get, um, you get the course curriculum, which is four months worth of curriculum at a value of $6,000, an extra 13 videos of value of $1,000 together, that's 7,000, weekly small group coaching calls to answer all of your questions, $3,600, plus the 1,000, plus the 6,000 is over 10 grand right there, monthly private coaching calls with me, which is another $1,500, and a bonus one-on-one -on -one with me to kick it off at $500 puts you way over $12,500 right now. But I'm giving you a massive discount. I don't charge anywhere near that anyway. And I want to speak with you to see if it's a good call for you and to decide who should be in what group. I like to have women that are in the same time zone or have similar sensibilities or are going through a similar time in life. So you have to call, you have to sign up for a call to be able to apply so that we know that we're a good fit and I can answer all your questions there and we can decide what the next steps should be. That's it, how's that sound? So um, look for a link in the comments below, joeleader.com forward slash apply to see the complete course details, to see a booking link for how you can find a call time to talk to me. And I can't wait to actually talk to you in person. So book a call, book a call. I only have, it's only me. I don't have a team. So if you want to join, you have to find time with me and then we can get started. And you want to make, um, you want to make really good use of this deal because I think it is invaluable investment in your head. So I would love to have you. Oh, Sharon Fisher, I certainly hope you're not saying that being in your 60s doesn't mean means that you can't join a course like this. Girl, I'm I'm creeping up on you, and I have nothing but learning left to do in my life. So it's not an age thing, and this is not it's not career based. It's not like oh, I'm a work from home mom, and this doesn't make sense for me. These confident lessons are great for you. Learning how to delegate, resolve conflict, how to have direct feedback, super great for all women everywhere. Depending not depending on whether you have a job or don't have a job, or you're at the end of your career or the beginning of your career. I am such a believer that this is transformational work. So think about it. Look at, the, um, look at the booking link that shows you all the information about the course and book a call with me. Tomorrow is the final day, and it is my favorite day of training. Can you believe it? Could I get more excited than I've already been? It is a super special training. It is my favorite topic of all. I do not keep it in any of my other course material. All of this stuff that you've received is not repeated in the course. So there's um, tomorrow's really great. It's all for strong and sensitive women. How do you create more energy? How do you create more energy in your life? How do you create better boundaries? How do you self-regulate your energy? It is an amazing lesson. I am so fired up to give it to you, so don't miss it. Know that these videos come down Sunday night, so schedule time to make sure you see them all. And a special added bonus tomorrow is the last day. There's going to be another giveaway. Got to stay on till the end. Put your name in the hat, and somebody's going to win a prize. And it might be a little different than it has been last time. So that's what I've got for you tonight, ladies. Are you so happy? Are you so fired up? Do you know that there's so much here for you? Because there is. There is nothing but choice and new decisions and progress. 
And you can always get a little bit better and a little bit better and feel a little bit better and feel a little bit better and unwind some of the knots that are holding you back, keeping you stuck, small, or feeling horrible. There's so much here for you. And this comes with so much love. I'm really, really happy that you're joining me. I really want to thank you for taking this time to be with me. I know I feel like we're sort of ending. We've got tomorrow. It's so empowering for me to feel connected with you in this time of deep disconnection and just rift politically, socially, energetically, career-wise. This is so, such a powerful mode for us to be able to come together and create a community like this. So thank you for joining. You're a big part of it. All right. You guys have a good night. Look for a link from me, and I look forward to talking to you really soon. And that's bye for now. See you tomorrow. Don't miss it.